you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 19. We're talking about the voice of His Word. The voice of His Word. We started out in Genesis where it says that Adam and Eve uh, uh, walked, or at least Adam, walked in the cool of the, uh, of the morning with the voice of God. And, and we began to capitalize on that and just show that that wasn't sound waves that went out through the garden and that Adam you know, jumped up and chased those sound waves, right? The voice of God is, is not just sound waves. The voice of God is alive and it's real and, and it has a personality, amen? And it says that Jesus, that voice, came through a multitude of prophets over thousands of years, and it culminated into Jesus becoming flesh. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, a lot of times we kind of look at the Word, and the Word, we separate it, and it's the Word of God. Well, there isn't a difference between His Word and Him. It is God. Right, And so when, when you open your Bible and you begin to study the Word of God, don't just study it intellectually, but open up your heart and receive it because you need to commune with it. You need to fellowship with it. You need to have oneness with it. In 1 John, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have touched and handled. He says, I realize that this is the word of God that we have koinonia with, that we have fellowship with, that we have oneness with, that we're in common with. So the Holy Spirit is in common with you and you're in common with the Holy Spirit and with the word of God. The Holy Spirit is that connection between the living word of God and your spirit. And if you'll begin to uh, yield yourself more to the Holy Spirit, your heart is going to begin to open more to see and understand what the voice of God really is. And the voice of God is, is, is your, your defense, it is your provision, it is your life, it is your next breath. The, the voice of God is everything to you in the spirit realm, or what we talked about, the invisible realm, as, as we begin to look in, in Hebrews and how God began to minister to Abraham, and that, uh, that when Melchizedek came, that uh, Abraham gave tithe of all things to him. There was no precedent for that, but that was an act of faith out of the grace of God because Melchizedek was sent from God there's only two high priests that have ever been sent from God to man. All other high priests went from man to God. There's a difference. The first one was Melchizedek. The second one, Jesus Christ, because he took over the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood. And so Jesus is our high priest, right? And we are priests that are under him. We are a holy nation. We're a royal priesthood. It means we're not just common people that aren't going to hell. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We're in this world. We're not of it. Too many times we get so captivated and caught up in everything in the natural and what's going on in the natural that it affects our heart. And that's the main thing that we're doing is to show you that your heart is the power source of your life. Everything that you're going to live in life, whether it be good or bad, is going to come out of the power of your heart. And the more you yield yourself to the natural things, the more that you're going to be separated from the truth of who you are in Christ. And separation is the definition of death. So death worketh in those that are ignorant of who they are. The Bible's plain about that, right? And that Jesus came to what? To destroy death. He kicked death to the curb. Amen. And death ruled and reigned when when Adam transgressed. So it isn't so much our sins that we're doing out there, which we shouldn't be doing them. Right. But it isn't those sins. That's not what brought Jesus Christ down to be crucified on the cross to go into the belt of the earth to take back the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and to arise on the third day, it was Adam's sin, because Adam was the one that empowered death. Death became the king, right? And there was no way for mankind to give back to God. There was a barrier, and that barrier had to be destroyed, and that barrier was destroyed 
through Jesus, who is called the door. So Jesus made a doorway into uh, that barrier uh, so that mankind individually now can go to God. Not as a nation, not as a, not as a church, not as a denomination, but individually we have a door open that we can go through Christ to the Holy of Holies, the holiest of all places, to God himself, and God has concluded us complete in Christ Jesus. If you're complete, then you're lacking nothing. But it's the devil's job to try to convince you that you're lacking something. He does a pretty good job. You know, don't want to commend him, but he does a pretty good job. But he doesn't do it alone. He's a total failure. What he uses is just ignorant people that don't know what they're talking about. People that have taken the scriptures and, and, and messed them all up and kind of mixed the old covenant and the new covenant together, right? And have come up with their own, um, own religion, their own denomination. And we need to go into the Bible and begin to separate what is purely truth of the New Testament, New Covenant, and, and we went over that last time. So anyway, you, you can find that on YouTube. So we're going to go on and we're going to talk about the voice of his word in Psalm 19. Now listen to this. This is something that is, is beginning to mean more and more. How many of you, when, when you first came into the kingdom of God, got born again, uh, one of the prevailing things that was being taught is the return of Jesus Christ, right? Anybody come into the, into the kingdom of God around mid-70s? I mean, some of you weren't even thought of, but, <laughs> but back in that day. And I'll tell you what, man, that was a major message. And, and they had a, a movie that came out, Thief of the Night. Do you ever, <clears throat> Thief in the Night? Oh, man, that is scare the bejeebies out of you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> and there were so many people that came ushered into the kingdom of God because, because this, this movie just, uh, you didn't want to take any chances, right? Uh, the only problem is there was probably, you know, 5% of the people that ever stayed with God. It just scared the snot out of them, and, and they just wanted to get their, their in a sense, salvation secure, Right. So that they can miss hell and go to heaven. But then uh, the, the, the natural things of this world begin to pull again. OK, don't show your hands, but you all, you all know what I mean when it's getting pulled back into things or you start dabbling in some things that that uh, your heart saying, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. And we do anyway. And it isn't so much. Uh, uh, acts of sin or things that are out there, but most of it is, is, is just our perceptions and our opinions. Come on, come on. Everybody has an opinion. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, I conclude the rest of you are liars. <laughs> but there is forgiveness. Glory be to God. All right. And so what God is saying is that we begin to build up through this influence, we start begin building a stronger opinion of just the way we see things. Okay, now don't raise your hand on this, but how many of you got a political opinion of things that are going on, right? And you literally have no proof or evidence of anything. But you do see some fruits and you're judging that and I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it's easy for us to develop an opinion even when we really don't know what's happening. Right? Do you know that God used some people in the Old Testament and some in the New Testament that uh, weren't really good? And God's people didn't have a good opinion of them. But God used them anyway. Come on now. And so we kind of developed this thing that the only one that God is going to use is, is some famous, powerful man or woman of God, right? And he does. But how many of you know that even them have opinions? 
Hello. One of the most powerful ministers that I've ever known was Catherine Kuhlman. I didn't know her personally, but I was in a couple of her meetings and the power of God was so strong. It was phenomenal. It was. I mean, it yanked my chain. It hooked my jaw. I mean, it it dragged me into a place I didn't know existed, but I saw some things and I felt some things and it just pulled me in there. And I began to study her and stuff because that's what we do, right? What did you do? Lose 15 pounds and everyone will be around saying, what did you do? Well, you quit eating what you were eating, <laughs> right? Or as much. It, it, it's not rocket science, right? But we want to know, what did you do? And that's what I wanted to know, <laughs> Catherine, what did you do? Well, I couldn't get hold of her, so I just read books about her. And the thing of it was is she had this phenomenal anointing on her most all of her life. But it wasn't in the realm of healing at first. She was an evangelist. She would go out and just talk to people. They'd just give their heart to God. She could, she could almost get a fence post say. You know, and I've met people like that. I've known people like that, that have this grace, this anointing. You know, I was in a Billy Graham meeting and he says, you know, now all of you come, you know, the one to know. G and I felt myself getting pulled out of the seat. And I thought, man, I'm born again. I'm spirit filled. I'm a pastor. <laughs> and I felt myself almost being drugged down the aisle. You know? As hundreds of people were, were, were going, there was off to the left there, there was a, a, a guy, who's, uh, a biker, you know, I don't know if he was a one percenter, but anyways, he, you know, had all the biking, you know, uh, paraphernalia and things, you know, and he was making comments and snarred remarks and, you know, he just wanted to get an usher. I, I was trying to, hoping that he would leave. Come on. He's the one that needed it more than me, right? <laughs> but anyways, when Billy says, come, that word, it just, he just started bawling and staggered. He got up, got up and down to the front. Listen, man, there is an anointing. There is a presence. There is a net. That is beyond anyone's natural understanding. And that is the voice of God, which is the life of the word of God that emanates and goes out and begins to grab hold the hearts of people, pulling them in, pulling them in. If I hadn't have been around some of those presents, I don't know where I would have ended up. But I'm sure it wouldn't have been here. But I was in meetings and God took me to meetings that just kept grabbing hold of me and yanking me around corners and over hills and into the unknown, into the unseen, into things that I had, didn't know anything about. I was just trying to, to learn to educate my brain, right? And he kept grabbing my heart and taking me into the unseen and showing me things and seeing signs, wonders, miracles, the powerful things of God. Right. And in the process, I began to learn through the word of God what releases these things. And it's your faith in the word of God. See, people have opinions. I've talked to people. I sat down with two two professors from Berkeley and we began to discuss something. I didn't know what Berkeley stood for. Right. And they began to converge upon me, and, 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 and they're very, very liberal. I didn't know people could be that liberal. I was raised in southern Oregon, where it's fairly conservative, and got dumped into this, I can't believe you even think that way, right? And they began to talk to me, and, and, and on the inside of me, I'm going, See, I had a secret weapon. 
See, the Bible says when you speak in that unlearned language, that you're speaking right to God and that you're speaking mysteries. And the more you speak, the more you'll understand what those mysteries are all about. And so I began to silently on the inside of me began to pray because my brain, it didn't take long to get to the end of the street. <laughs> but I knew who God was. See, I had something they didn't and couldn't take away from me. And that was an experience. I've experienced God. I've experienced what you haven't. So don't sit there and tell me the way that it is when it isn't, right? You can tell me until you're blue in the face and try to convince me with algorithms and all kinds of things that two plus two is five. You will never convince me, ever. Why? Because I have four fingers. Two Plus two is one, two, three, four. It's never that one. It will always be four. Always. And so in the process of them coming on with all this, this stuff, I said, help and instantly the husband said something to me and the wife looked at him and said you can't say that and he says yes I can't no you can't he says because he said something and, he, and you told him he couldn't say it so you can't say it either you wouldn't let him go down that road so you can't go down that road either. and they're at each other and I'm just going, <laughs> as I begin to open up and listen to the Holy Spirit. And then they got back together and they came in. It's like two wolves coming in on a little sheep. And you're cowered down into the corner and they're vicious and their teeth are showing and they're coming in for the final kill. And he says, you think you're better than us. And I said, no. I don't think I'm better than you. You do too. No. See, my thought was, why are you telling me what I think? <laughs> Come on. Does anybody ever try to tell you what you're thinking? And I said, no, I don't think that. And the whole thing converged upon this. Why? Why? And out of here I said, love. And it went, Phew. and they just backed down and became toothless chihuahuas. <laughs> and they shook their head, they looked at me, tears began to come in their eyes. And we prayed with them. And they received Jesus. And my brain was still trying to figure it out. Why did that do that? Sure, is love, but can't you debate love? But see, it put him in an undebatable place. And he showed me that life goes beyond intellect. Life is powerful. Life is unchanging. Life wins every time. It's truth. And that's what Jesus did when he was walking around and he was speaking to the people and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and Sanhedrin and everyone would come up because they're all brain children. And they would begin to, to draw him into debates and things like that. And he would just speak something out of the love of God and they'd just shut my mouth. And turn around and walk away. It didn't mean they were convinced, but they had no argument against truth, against life, against love. 
against the Spirit of God, against the things that are unseen, this invisible realm out there of a God that does exist because He created everything you can see. And He still dominates it in the place that you can't best Him, right? But He's not controlling everything. He yielded the control to us that we begin to control things in our own life and each one of us begins to take control of things in our own life and then collectively we begin to have a bigger say in everything that's going on. The same way the devil does. The same way things are going on out there in society today. And those that really have something to say aren't saying anything. But we need to open up and begin to say. Say what? Say what the Word says. Now look at this. People, we are embarking on something that is so phenomenal. So phenomenal. If you can see it now, if you can get your teeth into it now, better off you will be. But one day your eyes will open, regardless of whether they're pried open or you open them, they're all going to be open. We're all headed to where God said we are, and there is no escape from that. Whether you're going to be part of what He's doing or whether you're going to be against what He's doing, it is culminating in a final end. And we are further and deeper into that than mankind has ever been. We're in a special place. What an awesome place. Man, watch this. He said, verse 4. No, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showing knowledge. Meaning that creation has never stopped. God didn't take the earth like a little toy and wind it up and see where it's going to go. When he spoke everything into creation, that word didn't go anywhere. It's still here. It's still working. It's still creating. A tadpole still becomes a bullfrog. A caterpillar still becomes a butterfly. They can't figure it out. And the thing that gets them the most is that it doesn't change DNA. And so it's amazing and it's mar marvelous, but we set them aside because we've got our own beliefs and intellect about the animal world and everything. And they don't fit with evolution. They don't fit in certain places. Now, if they change DNA, then we could say something wonderful happens. But because they don't change DNA, we don't know what happens. You have a fat caterpillar that does nothing but eat leaves and has short little stubby legs. And it crawls all over the place and it eats and eats and eats and eats. And then one day it just goes over, spins a canoe, canoe a cocoon, <laughs> climbs inside of it and melts. And then it reforms and it cracks it open and it comes out this beautiful butterfly, long slender legs, beautiful wings. And it doesn't eat leaves anymore. It drinks nectar out of the flowers. It's like, whoa. See, that's God. Now you see that they use that as an example, when you get born again, that you're no longer the same creature. You're still in that same body, but your spirit man was a little fat caterpillar. And when you said Jesus and said yes to him, it melted. And it turned into this beautiful spirit, a spirit of God on the inside of you. And most of us still treat it like a caterpillar. We try to feed it leaves. It doesn't eat leaves anymore. 
It flutters around and it takes in the nectar of heaven. It takes in things that are of the invisible world. Many times it's contrary to what you can see and perceive. Everyone can look at you and say, you don't look so good. How you feel? I feel great, praise God. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. You don't look healed. <laughs> How do you feel? Praise God, I don't go by my feelings. I go by the Word of God that says I'm healed, therefore I'm healed. But really, how do you feel? Well, I feel pain. I knew it. (laughs) But that doesn't mean I'm not healed. What makes you think you're healed when you feel pain and you look terrible? I think I'm healed because the Bible says I'm healed. And I'd rather believe the Bible than my body. You what? You'd rather believe the Bible than your body? What are you, some kind of mind over matter? No, I'm spirit over matter. Hello? And so a lot of times people, they don't understand that. Then the next day they see you saying, how you doing? I'm healed. Well, you look better. I'm not only better, I'm healed. Hallelujah. What do you think happened? I know what happened. I listened to the voice of God. The voice of God said, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. And I believed that more than I did my body. Huh. Well, something happened. Come on. I knew the brother of a man who had lost his eye, got shot in the eye with an arrow when he was nine years old. Lost his eye, had a glass eye. I knew his his brother. He pastored over here in in, uh, Sun City or over in that area. And his mother took him to a tent meeting. And he was prayed for. And his sight opened up and he could see and they were so excited they had him come up and the evangelist says okay now put your hand over your good eye and he did and and he he started reading things and he says whoa praise God they're jumping and shouting and praising God and the mother says no you don't understand says understand what she said show him and he took that glass eye out And then he held up something and he read it. Come on. And I saw him on television. There's a program some time ago. That's incredible. Anybody remember seeing that? And he stood up there and, and, and they taped his good eye off and he took that glass eye out and they would come up and, and he'd read uh, driver's license and things. And you can see the announcer just looking at him and he's just, he's what? Wordless. And then when he finally talked, he says, that is the greatest power of ESP I have ever seen. (laughs) What an ESP? It's the power of God. Right? But see, it even left most Christians befuddled. In the God they said can do anything. But when he does something that's beyond what you think, then all of a sudden it's not him. Come on. That's why I like to stretch myself. I like to see things and believe things. I've had God do phenomenal miracles. I prayed for a guy that had, had a kidney surgically removed and the other one was, was going bad and I prayed for him. And he went back to the doctor and the doctor says, you know, something's going on. I think that kidney's doing better because... You know, you, you've got really good numbers here. Things are working. So they took an x-ray. And there was another kidney that, that was growing in there about uh, a little over a quarter, almost a third the size uh, of the original kidney. And the doctor said, I don't know where that come from, but it's taken off the pressure of the other one. So you're doing good. I don't know where that came from. 
Huh? Hello? I mean, I can go on and on. Uh, phenomenal miracles that I've seen taking place. Dave Roberson prayed for a young man, a teenager in India that was born without teeth, never did have them. He was a Hindu. No, he was Muslim. And Dave prayed for him, and God put a full set of teeth in his mouth instantly. Instantly. I mean, it created such... His whole family, everybody came in and got... Everybody that knew him came and received Jesus. The power of God. What can God do? He's not bound to your mind. Come on. Watch this. He says, the heavens basically won't shut up. All through the firmament, all through the universe is expanding over 96,000 miles a second in all directions. And it's declaring the glory of God. New galaxies coming into being, new stars, planets, by the billions. They said the Milky Way has over a billion stars in it. I won't pretend like I really know what that means. A billion stars. You know, the sun is one of the smallest stars in the Milky Way galaxy. One of the smallest. And there's billions. And they spread out all over the place. And here's the thing, get you. We are one, one galaxy. And there's billions of galaxies. Man, what is a billion times a billion times a billion, right? And see, man looks at this and they say what? They say, the earth can't be the only place there's life. Sure it can. Why? Because God said so. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And everything in earth, including earth, was created by the Word of God. And there isn't anything in creation that was not created by the Word of God. And God said, I created everything for you it's for us the Bible says the earth is under constant travail because it's been used for its unattended purpose and the travail is for the sons of God to rise up and take authority that God has given us and that is taking place. As people begin to open their eyes, things are beginning to happen. That's why we're in probably the most exciting time other than the time Christ was here. The most exciting time because of the awareness of the bride of Christ into who she is and the authority of the sons of God that are stepping into that place, that realization. We're getting... So excited because we can speak a word and pray and a few dollars show up or a, we get favor here and there. And that's just like a little puppy that first starts to walk and is shaking all over the place and it walks, you know, and it could take two steps and it's pleased. And it's excited. But there comes a day when that little puppy is all over the place. Hello? Yeah. And we look at it and say, I wonder what happened. <laughs> we did. Watch this. Verse 5. 
Now that, um, verse 4, their line is gone out through the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice as a strong man that runs a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit path unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. What he's saying is that we're coming into a place that we are more in line with the pre-planned destiny of time than ever before. That the sun right now is generating and speeding. And even though there's still 24 hours in a day, it doesn't seem like it. Hello? And it seems like it's getting quicker and quicker. Even though time, linear time, isn't changing, but Kairos time is. We're seeing that in the spirit realm where there is no time, that we have authority over time. And we're seeing things that are happening that that are confusing the people in this linear world, and they don't quite understand what is going on. But what's going on is those that are passing into the invisible realm, are now ruling from that realm into this visible realm, right? From the spirit to the natural. And the sun is like a bridegroom that every morning when he gets up and that first sun rays begin to strike the land, it rushes and it runs and it streaks across the sky. Because the groom is getting excited about the bride. And it says that every morning that that sun gets up, you know that Jesus, the Christ, the groom, is rushing this day through because there's a point in time when all things will be done. All things will be concluded. And that's what Jesus is looking at, is where he's going. He's not lollygagging around and tiptoeing through the tulips. And his heart is fixed, and he's on a steady course. And the Holy Spirit is being flooded throughout the whole world to all, on all flesh because he's germinating. The Word of God on the inside of us. Why? Because this society has been ruled and dominated by human intellect mixed with a few scriptures and things, but the Holy Spirit is taking it back. Taking it back. Bit by bit, word by word. To the day that people will get up and they'll have their flowery orientation about what they believe and their philosophies of religion and and, and God and everything else and it'll just drivel off their chin. (laughs) When somebody that doesn't hardly know anything will get up and begin to open the blind eyes and the cripple will begin to walk and people begin to be set free and and, and addicts beginning to become clean all over. It's something that that, that that is building. It's in the unseen realm. And the natural church has been so bound by its inabilities that it's losing drastically. And so the Holy Spirit is coming in and moving in and pumping the people 
with the truth, the reality of the word of God. He says, I'm here to confirm my word. I'm here to deliver my word. I'm here to show you that it works. I'm here to heal the sick. I'm here to deliver the oppressed. I'm here to open the blind eyes, the deaf ears. I'm here to do the miraculous, the miracles and the things, the signs and the wonders, the greatness of who I am. Why? Because you've opened up a crack and I slipped through. And he says that time will not allow me to do anything else but charge into this future of the things that are here. And people, we are past that time. We're in it. The bridegroom raises and streaks across the sky. And every time that he goes from one end to the other, that's one more day closer. One more. Watch this. Here's the exciting part. He says that it, day by day and night by night it utters speeches. Just creation right now. Just the fact that the sun comes up in the morning, the, noon com- the moon comes up. Just the fact that there's a rotation in the heavenlies and the stars and the, all the things that are going on. Just because Pluto's still there. Just because everything is set in its own order and it works and it doesn't deviate and doesn't change and it doesn't matter what your IQ is. It just doesn't change, right? And just because of that, it's what? It's declaring creation. It's declaring it from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Creation is being declared. Why? God is saying, I'll show you, I'll prove to you that the voice of my word created everything that is created And everyone that believes in that creation is going to excel in strength, excel in everything they set their hand to do. You see, the enemy is trying. He's futile. He's trying with everything he's got to what? To bring distraction. It's smoke and mirrors, people. There isn't anything there. If we just stand up and say, Satan... Shut up! Hello. But we the powerful get together and say, what is your opinion? What is yours? Here's mine. We trade opinions. We save opinions. We polish opinions out. We like our own opinions. Listen, I sit and I talk. I talk to Dale and Marilyn a lot over coffee and stuff. You know, inadvertently, an opinion slips out. (laughs) And sometimes halfway through, I'm thinking, where'd you come from? And then we'll go home and I'll be driving home and I say, God, that was dumb. Forgive me, Lord. What does my opinion matter? See, but still the natural part that wants to jump up and think you're smarter than everybody around and ready to, willing to prove it. You know what? You're going to end up with spit drooling off your chin. Why some little kid jumps up and say, Yea, thus saith God. Now watch this. Watch this. Creation preaches God's word day and night to every living soul that has ever lived or will ever live on this earth. Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of Him, God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without any type of excuse. His bride is being united with Him. Nothing 
escapes the effects of the sun. It is the center of all creation and life. Nothing will escape the effects of God's word, his voice. It is the center of everything that is created, the center of all life. Psalm 19, verse 7. The voice. I rearranged this. This is the Thompson translation. The voice of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The voice of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The voice of the Lord is right, rejoicing the heart. The voice of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The voice of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The voice of the Lord is true and righteous altogether. More to be desired is the voice than gold, yea, than much fine gold. The voice is sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by your voice, O God, is thy servant warned. And in obeying your voice, there is great reward. Who can understand errors? Cleanse thou me from the secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from the prideful sins. Prideful sins, what? I know more than you. I know, I, I know, intellect, intellect, right? Amen. Let them not be or have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. Amen. God said, I don't care who you are, what you think, what you believe, what experiences you have, or how many of you collectively come together to make a vote. He said, I will have my way. And my way is at the end of all times, those that have yielded their heart with me will come up and rise with me and be with me for all eternity. For everything that you see will one day be destroyed. The heavens will be folded up like a cloak. It says there is a change that is coming in all things. He said, my long suffering waits patiently, trying to get the last soul in. But they have been stiff necked. They have not believed me. They have not loved me. And so time is being ushered and quickened and speeded up. Because darkness will overtake, lest I do something dramatic and drastic. And that is to cut the time short. I have filed down my time, says God. It will come quicker than what people think. It is but a time off but surely it will come. Just as you see that sun rise every morning in the east and set every evening in the west, so is the truth of what I tell you. It's coming. It is nigh here. Stir yourself up and come deeper 
into me. I guarantee I can give you a far better life than anything you can even dream of, saith God.